You guys have seen Whiplash, right? <laughs> <laughs> Writing songs with Feel Right is just, I just really admire a lot of stuff. And a lot of it is like, you know, friends making music, and I really like appreciate what they're doing, or kind of like the history of like do it yourself recording, or these like one man bands dating back to like, you know, uh, Todd Rundgren or Emmett Rhodes, or people who kind of like. Um, and so that's sort of how like Feel Right started, was just like kind of piecemealing together all these songs with whatever equipment I had and we're recording an album now where it's the first time it's been like the full band uh, on the record and kind of everyone is uh, represented yeah a lot of it has to do with um, I guess homesickness. Like I, I moved to Pittsburgh in 2010, and uh, um, yeah, just started writing these songs and teaching myself how to record. And uh, at first, I was quite bad at it, but I sort of just persisted. I think I was like really admiring a lot of things that were going on in Canada in music. Like bands like Cousins who were putting out tapes and kind of uh, had this, you know, do-it-yourself attitude towards uh, recording and releasing music. So uh, just kind of bought a few microphones and taught myself how to record. And I kind of wrote all these songs in the midst of being uh, deeply homesick for uh, my friends that I would make music with back in Calgary. Um, Yeah. Okay. But yeah, I uh, I grew up playing in bands here, so I started playing in a band called Sids with Brady, who you saw performing in the video. Um, hold on, what should we get? Still the one I run. Still the one I run to. Run to the one that I belong to. Still the one I want for life. Still the one that I love, the only one that I truly love. Still the one I kiss. Good night. Good night.
I don't know. I mean, I think it's possible if you, like, throw everything you've got behind it and want to play the the game, the, like, you know, music grants and industry showcases. And but that can be so discouraging. Lab- yeah, I mean, that's the thing is the reason why I'm so attracted to some kind of, like, do-it-yourself process is just because it's, like, very immediate and very, like, um, you know, you just... If you have the idea, you can just, like, do it and make it happen. And, you know, I think the rules have sort of changed because of the way in which people encounter music. is It's so different now. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, you know, you don't really have to rely on, you know, having that conventional idea of success to, like, connect with people yeah. the way you might have had to, you know, some years ago. So I think that's the only goal, really, is to keep on connecting with people. And, um, and I, I mean, that's something I'm, like... I'm noticing just since I guess I spent five and a half years away from Calgary and the last few years have been way more exciting than I ever recall as far as things really happening and it feels like there's some kind of good energy going on. one this is a beautiful piano so I I got this from a guy in Pittsburgh who he like worked at an old folks home or like a you know something like that and um, someone who just like left this piano there um, presumably after passing away but he just sort of took this piano home and he didn't know how to play and so it was a sort of a Craigslist thing um, Yeah, you, like, deconstruct things, and then you reprocess them, and, like, I I think that's, like, a really big part of making anything, really. Mm -hmm. It's you you have, like, a big crush on something, and you have such a big crush on it that you want to be just like it. And then in the process of trying to be just like something, you inevitably insert yourself into it, in a way. And uh, and this new thing comes out. on the air. Cool water. It's got this sort of Twin Peaks sounding bass line. Yeah. 
very long So don't expect too much And don't you say that we're losing touch Don't you say that we're losing touch We do have a very special bond. We ha- used to have this... Uh, Two men folk duo called Braidman and Craig Funkel. Uh, we just play the bar name Sue for uh, open mic and just play Simon and Garfunkel covers. But it actually was very, uh, it was like an education in singing harmony. Like, that's my favorite thing to do with Brady is sing some nice harmony with him. Yeah, yeah. If you ever find us a karaoke bar together, we do a really good version of uh, Baby When You're Gone by uh, Brian Adams and Mel C. Uh, that was fantastic. That was uh, quite a nice little, like a yell. Was that a yell? Yeah. That was a feel all right yell. That's, that's my signature. Hey, Brady. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, of course. We'll be watching for that. I'll do it again. Um, yeah. Please do. Right now. <laughs> it's Wolfman Kirch. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I'll let you get, uh, get a plan again. And uh, okay. Ke- keep on the rock and roll. We'll talk after. We will. Okay. One, two, three, four. It's sort of just been a matter of doing stuff because of some sort of like blind faith and weird motivation that I don't know where it necessarily comes from, but I don't really like the idea of playing the Canadian music industry game, but at the same time we've made stuff or we've played shows, like good things seem to happen and uh, I, I kind of just you know want to keep on doing what we're doing and I'll, I'll follow the path however that happens
Yum, yum.